Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Love is Blind Season 2, Episode 14? Sure. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell, and leave a comment down below. All right, so disclaimer, the video might be a little bit laggy. Guys, I am moving tomorrow, so I need to get these videos out quickly because I probably won't be here tomorrow, all right? However, we're gonna get into it starting with Danielle. She cannot fathom that Shayna could ever be shady enough to be DMing Shane on the low. And as much as they deny it, I'm sorry. I just, I don't trust anything that comes out of Shayna's mouth. And neither does Danielle because she confronts her about it. That you were like sending him flirty and DMs and stuff. Not at all, I was with him. Never been anything inappropriate between me and Shane. I think she wants to play the victim in the situation. When she's not, she was fully aware. The most scandalous message that we probably have to each other is like, sweet baby. And this is how you know this relationship cannot be real because how dare you have the gall to question me about extramarital activities that I have in front of my spouse slash to be spouse. Pull me aside, Heffa, what the hell? Oh my God, no, no, I, ooh. I, that, no. If you really thought this was a real relationship and you respected it, you never would do that. Unless y'all would, then that's you. On the other hand, me, hell no. It's a shock to me that in a year of marriage, Ayana and Jared's parents have not been in the room together since the wedding. Like they live in the same city. You know what I mean? Like in my situation, I don't think my parents and my in-laws parents are going to meet because my parents live in Zimbabwe, but y'all live in the same city. How is that? And now that y'all are on the cusp of a divorce, now you want to bring the parents together? Make it make sense. Because they haven't had a conversation or anything since the wedding. Yeah, and I don't honestly, even know if they talk much at the wedding. I mean, I wouldn't have reached out to my parents if I, um, if I didn't think it was useful. What if Jennifer comes in like she did last time and was like, all right, so let's, uh, let's have this conversation. <laughs> the long and short of it is uh, they just wasn't meant to be, okay? They, they just weren't, they just weren't meant to be. We knew that from the beginning. And I think too, like, I don't know if it was like contractually, I want to know what, what are the rules of the show? Because if it doesn't work with your number one, must you have a number two? There are people who start in the pods that we never see after episode one, you know what I mean? So clearly dropping out is an option. And I feel like once it wasn't there with Mallory, he should have dropped it. The way, and I know some people will say, you can fall in love with two people. I don't think you can fall in love equally with two people because the way he was boohoo crying, baby, you know where his heart was at. Come on. So Salvador is talking. He feels like Jesse is the one. So he's contemplating marriage. For what reason? God knows. With Jesse, it's just been effortless. This is not to say that I don't want you to be with Jesse. Um, but I think you owe it to yourself to take your time. There's a ring. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, wait, really. Stop. I need these people to stop playing in my face. Stop playing in my face. These relationships are not real. Like, please, <laughs> they're not real. And then Salvador makes the confession that um, Mallory was with this guy and she was drunk and this was a week before the wedding and that's why he stayed somewhere else. And I think that's about the same time that, the, that his ex-girlfriend showed up to, I'm like, everything about this situation is shady. It's all shady. Didn't believe in their relationship before they got married. Don't believe it now after they didn't get married. Don't believe this whole Jesse narrative. Please hang it up. Jared and Ayana finally meet with the parents. And at first it was like, ooh, small talk, whatever. Ayana's mom was like, listen, let's cut the crap. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Marriage is not easy. Over the past couple of months, like I've definitely been struggling. I've seen the damage that it's done within this short time, and that was never my intentions. You have some friends that are jealous of what you have, and because they can't have what you have, they'll sabotage. Side combo. If you're not religious, I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna talk about the church for a minute. The church does not prepare people for marriage. 
I don't know about y'all's church, but the church that I grew up in does not prepare you for marriage. And it's not surprising to me that Jarrett was so ill-prepared, even though his father is a pastor. When I tell you like, dating ministries is normally for couples who are already engaged or something like that, or have been in really serious relationships. It starts from being single. Knowing how to date starts from being single. So then you get these people who don't know what they, what, what to do, get in these relationships. Now they've been in relationships for long term on the cusp of marriage. Now you want to counsel them. Good luck trying to tell me this man that I've been with for seven years is not going to be my husband. I've already invested time. I'm just going to go do it. Do it. Oh, that was a mistake. Y'all should have, y'all should have reached me when I was single. That's all I'm saying. That's not the story for everybody, but I just feel like they missed the mark, the church. So even though his dad was a pastor and he felt this pressure to settle down and, and be a married man and whatever, he was not given the tools to be a married man, at least to Ayana. Ayana also gets called out because baby girl, you are not perfect. Yanni, I love you. It's not all just on him. It's two people in this thing. If you're going to stay, you got to give him a complete opportunity to make it right. I know. I know. It's obviously easier to point out the person who has the uh, blaring red flags, but you know, some of hers are, you know, maybe uh, uh, maroon, uh, baby pink. You know, they're in the red family as well, okay? Definitely the fact that she set herself up. I don't think um, this was due to anybody else. She knew what she was getting into, if you ask me. And she overestimated the effort that was, was no, underestimated. Yeah, underestimated the effort needed, but then overestimated like their connection. Like our love is gonna carry us through, baby girl. That's not how it works in marriage. Marriage is very confronting. It, it makes you very vulnerable. And the issues you had before are only gonna be magnified in marriage. Also the mothering thing. Like girl, you, this is the man that you chose. You can't now berate him for being who he was when you met him. Deep D and uh, I almost said Kate. Kyle come to the conclusion that, you know, hey, let's give this relationship thing a try. And I made a huge mistake and I didn't ask her to marry me. And it seems like right now I'm at that crossroads again and I don't ever want to lose her. You're gonna actually try this? Yeah, yeah, you should. I look at him and I'm like, I could see myself doing this for the rest of my life with you. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work out. <laughs> Literally, as of yesterday, as of yesterday, Kyle posted this little, it didn't work out, I got love for you, moving on, blah, 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 whatever. These little iOS press releases that every couple does when they break up on Instagram. So, um, yeah, does it shock anybody? Because I can't say that I was shocked. Shane and Shayna meet up to discuss the drama from Natalie's birthday party. What is so scandalous about me and Shayna DMing each other? You know, I see a story here, I comment. Real oh boy. Right. That's what she does. She wants to hold up her perfect image. And she's very good at it. She is very good she's at it. She's very good. I find it very hard to believe that the woman who was out here yelling up a storm on the beach talking about Natalie not being good enough for Shane did nothing did nothing to cross the line with Shane. I find it very hard to believe. But anyways, uh, Shane meets the boyfriend, the fiance, sorry. And things go well, it was all cordial. They take a picture, they wanna post it on social media to kind of start their own drama. I'm just like, I will never fully believe that there was nothing out of line that happened between them. I just refuse to believe it. Danielle sets up a, a date for Nick. I skipped it. So we're moving on to Jared and Ayana, who also set up a date. Uh, Jared was kind of trying to reconcile with Ayana and she moved her stuff back in and they're basically talking about what they can do to make their relationship better. This is our first date with you back in the house. I just need you to show me that you're willing to grow. That's all. I'm committed to this lifelong partnership with you and doing what I need to do to make sure it's working. Jarrett picking Ayana did not make sense to me. And 
And I don't think that Jared is a bad husband. I just think he wasn't a good husband for Ayana. So if he was with somebody whose lifestyle he matched with more, maybe it would make more sense. Like if she's more of a partier, like, listen, I know bare couples, they will be posted up in the club together from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. together. All right, like it, there's nothing wrong with his lifestyle if he has a partner who not only appreciates it, but also engages in it so that it doesn't cause discourse in their relationship. Y'all gonna tell me, I, 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 I am the mess pick and, and, and Mallory really did love Sal. I don't know, guys. I don't know if I fully believe that. In the end credits, Mallory does address the story that Sal told. Because it's my guy friend, like he like misunderstood like, the situation, but like, I didn't stand Sal up. Wow, anything to just like, play the fucking victim, like. On top of that, everybody was asked if they had seen these messages that Natalie was talking about and not a single person was privy to those messages. In her defense, even though I do still think that she'd be a little bit shady too, everybody in the, everybody's shady. But in her defense, she did say that he was unsending them on Instagram. That's one feature I hate about Instagram. At least show me that the message has been unsent. Cause then, you know, like, like on WhatsApp, if you delete a message, it'll go, but it'll say this message was deleted. Yeah, cause don't make me seem delusional, even though she might be a little bit delusional. I can't lie about that. Anyways, that is it for Love is Blind season two. Season three starts next month, you guys. I had no idea, but here we go again. Hopefully we'll get at least one successful couple in the long run. So as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.